Hi everyone, I'm Rachel with Limble's product team. Today, we're going to be talking about work orders in Limble. Work orders are used for non-routine maintenance work. Unlike PMs, which are created to generate on a set schedule, work orders are typically not scheduled on a regular basis. In Limble, there are two types of work orders, planned and unplanned. Planned work orders can be procedural tasks, such as a lockout tagout, where an SOP needs to be done and planned for ahead of time, but is not necessarily scheduled on a regular basis. Unplanned work orders are typically emergency, time-sensitive, or unexpected tasks. These are often created from the work requests submitted by members of your organization or from new tasks created by your team. This video will walk you through how to start a work order from both the desktop and mobile apps and how to create work order templates. Depending on your permissions and plan with Limble, some of your screens may be different than mine. If you have any questions, reach out to our support team or talk to your Limble CSM. Let's get started. First, let's talk about how to start a work order from the desktop app. There are a few different ways to do this. Navigate to the Manage Work page by selecting the Locations icon, clicking on your desired location, and from the list of expanded options, select Manage Work. From here, click Start Work Order. Users who don't have access to the Manage Work page, such as technicians, would click on a location and from the list of options, select the Start a Work Order button from the navigation menu. You can also start a work order from an asset card, which will automatically associate that asset with the work order. From your location, navigate to the Manage Assets page by selecting Assets. Click on the asset that needs attention, and from the asset card, click on the Work Orders tab. Then click Start Work Order. Another way to start a work order is from the vendor card which will share the work order with the vendor automatically. This is great if you need to outsource the labor to a vendor who services your assets. From your location, navigate to the Manage Vendors page by selecting Vendors. Click on the vendor you want to share the work order with. From the Vendor card, click on the Shared Tasks tab. Then click Start and Share a Work Order. The last way to start a work order is through a QR code, which we cover in another video. Let's assume for this example, I'm starting my work order from the Manage Work page. Once I click Start Work Order, I am taken to a new window where I need to assign an asset to the task. We always recommend assigning an asset to any task in Limble, as this allows you to view work history and report on key performance metrics for that asset. In this example, I'm going to assign HVAC Unit 1, which is experiencing electrical issues. Then hit Select. We're now on the Setup Work Order screen. From here, I can add details about my work order, include pictures or other documents, change the priority level, and assign the work to a user or team. I also have the ability to bypass several of these steps by selecting from existing work order templates. We'll cover how to create those in just a bit. First, let's name this work order. I'm going to call this Electrical Issues on HVAC Unit. Next, add instructions. If this field is left blank, it will default to a checkbox instruction that tells the technician to complete work when the work order generates. In this example, I will say, examine the capacitor and wiring and fix issues. I can add more instructions after the work order is created if I need to. Next, you have the option to add a picture or document. This can be useful if you have a photo of where the asset is having issues or the current condition of the asset, or if you have any safety or user manuals that can be of use. In this example, I'll add the user guide for the HVAC unit. Click add picture slash document. From the pop-up, select your photo or document and click open. Next, you can choose to set a priority level. Depending on the urgency, this will help a user determine how quickly a work order needs to be handled. In this example, I'm going to make this a medium priority task. I'll click on the number and select medium priority from the dropdown. Next, we need to select a due date. If you don't select one, the due date will default to the day the work order is created. In this example, I'm going to make this due tomorrow. I can also add a specific time, so I'll make this due at 3 p.m. I have the option to add a start date, which also defaults to the day the work order is created. I'm going to leave this as is in our example. Next, you have the option to choose if this work order is planned or unplanned. While this can often be overlooked, planned versus unplanned task data can be used to see which assets are the biggest drain on resources and help your team plan better routine maintenance practices in the future. In this example, this work order is unplanned, 
Next, I need to assign this task to a user or team. In this example, I'm going to assign this to the manager. Once you've assigned a user or team, click Create. Now that the work order is created, I can add additional instructions and details if needed by clicking on the Edit button. In the new window, we have the option to associate parts and tools, add a description, and add or edit instructions. When changes are complete, click Continue, which will bring us back to the work order. Now that you have an idea of how to set up a work order, let's talk about work order templates. Work order templates allow you to create specific instructions that can be used over and over again, based on how an asset needs attention when it fails or to follow procedural instructions. You can even set default work order templates to specific assets, so the correct procedure is automatically associated when an asset needs work performed outside of your regular maintenance routine. To create a work order template, navigate to the Manage Work screen and select Start Work Order. In the new window, select Don't Assign to an Asset. Then click Select. We're back to the Setup Work Order screen. From here, click the Work Order Templates button. In the new pop-up, select New Template. Name your template. In this example, I'm going to create a Lockout Tagout procedure, so I'll name this Lockout Tagout. Next, you'll need to choose the template you want to create. If you already have a work order template you'd like to use to create another one, you can select Copy from an existing template. Otherwise, make sure Blank Template is selected. Then click Create. We're in the Edit Work Order Template screen. Now we can add details and instructions. I don't need to add a description or associate any parts or tools with this template, so I'll ignore those fields for now. First, I'll create an instruction to prepare for shutdown. To add an instruction, click Add Instruction. I'll choose the Note Instruction type, then hit Select. From here, I'll add sub-instructions that cover the procedural steps. I'll repeat this process until my Lodo work order template is set up. I can preview my template by clicking Preview. When I'm ready to go back to editing the template, I'll select Build This Task. Once I'm satisfied with my changes, I'll exit the Edit Work Order Template screen and see that my work order template is now ready to use. You can associate a specific work order template to an asset. Once you set a default work order template for an asset, it will automatically be used anytime a work order is started for that asset. This allows you to create standard operating procedures for any corrective action that needs to be taken on this equipment. From your desired location, navigate to the Manage Assets page by selecting Assets. Click on your desired asset. In the Asset card, click on the gear icon to be taken to the Asset settings. Under the default work order template header, select the blue text. In the pop-up window, click on your desired template, then hit Select. Now that you know how to set up a work order on the desktop app, let's take a look at this on mobile. Log into the Limble app on your mobile device or tablet. There are a few ways to start a work order. Under the Work Orders header, click Start a Work Order. From the menu at the bottom, click the Start Work Order button. Just as we could on desktop, we can start a work order from an asset or vendor card. To associate an asset and immediately start a work order, under the search header, select Asset. Search for your desired asset and then hit Select. From the Asset card, find the work order icon. From the New tab, you can select Start Work Order. Just as we could on the desktop app, we can update the default work order template by entering the asset settings. Under the default work order template header, select the blue text, and in the pop-up window, click on your desired template, then hit Select. To associate a vendor and share a work order with them from your mobile device, under the search header, select Vendor. Search for your desired vendor, and then hit Select. From the Vendor card, find the Work Order icon. From the New tab, you can select Start and Share Work Order. Congratulations! You're now a Work Order Pro! If you have additional questions, visit our Help Center, reach out to our support team, or talk to your dedicated Limble CSM to learn more.